Welcome to Health Connection with Kettering Health Network. I'm Chris Wilgas, and today we're talking to Dr. Kenneth Pohl. He's with the Kettering Joint Center, a member of Kettering Physician Network. And first, I want to say thanks for talking to me today. You're welcome. We're going to talk about total hip replacements, and uh, you know the history of total hip replacements. Yes, well, the history is uh, one of the things that comes up frequently. People say they think this is new, but it's not. This is one of the things that's been around for many years. 1959 in England, John Charnley made the first total joint replacement that was out of a hip. It was called total because both the top and bottom part of the joint was replaced. Before that, we tried a variety of things, metals, plastics, uh, ceramics, uh, you know, Bakelite, and none of them would hold up because that joint, when it went out, was sort of devastating. And you can remember people that would be walking with canes. So when John Charnley developed what he called a low friction hip arthroplasty, he kept it under his domain for 10 years until he released it and perfected it. Since then, he's been knighted, and this has been one of the most successful surgeries we have. Most people will know somebody in their family or in the neighborhood whose hip has worn out. And what happens when it wears out? The cartilage no longer is smooth. It becomes rough and textured, and eventually the bone shows through. And cystic areas occur within the head, and the bone will start to collapse, and you lose motion. You get to the point you can't get to your shoe and stockings. You have difficulty in dressing yourself. You're limping. Steps are difficult. Even getting out of a chair requires that you use the arms, getting off a commode, getting out of a uh, car, in and out of a tub is effort. And so that, when it happens, it starts to interfere with your quality of life, including the things like gardening, tennis, golf, and work. So what happened was they would take off the head and put in a big new ball, but then Dr. Charnley found a way to put in a smaller ball, and that reduced the friction. And by combining that ball with a polyethylene, the wear was sufficient that they could put this in the joint and we could get some longevity. How do you determine if a patient is right for a total hip replacement? Well, we always like to try to be very conservative. You don't want to remove any of the God-given parts of your body prematurely. And when you do put metal and plastic in, it has to be put into the point that you don't want a complication later. It has to be put in with precision. So sometimes we offer people to modify their lifestyle, maybe and lose weight, exercise a little bit differently, or modify their exercise and even their work. But when it gets to the point that you no longer can enjoy the quality of life, you're sitting around not engaging, you're letting your heart and your lung lose their capacity for good health, it's time to consider a hip replacement. Now, some people may have just lost some of the spirit of life, so you need to see a doctor and give him the history and an examination of the joint and checking to see what restrictions of motion there may be, plus an x-ray. X-rays will confirm whether or not there is any cartilage cushion left, and if you get down to where you're bone on bone, then a hip replacement is considered the, the way to get back into the quality of life that you need. You said an interesting thing. It's, it's like the, the hip can be something that leads you to stop taking care of the rest of your body. That's true. And many cardiologists will send their patients in to have their hip replaced when they find out that they no longer can do the cardiac rehab programs that's necessary. Sometimes people say, I'm too old, or what about my heart? The advantage is it keeps them younger. It lets them enjoy a much greater quality of life. What is life like after the hip replacement procedure is over? Well, we do allow people to go back to their previous sports. We have many that are golfing, playing tennis, uh, ro uh, canoeing, kayaking. And even um, in my practice, my farmers are back to work. My gardeners are back to kneeling. Air conditioning are back to crawling. Carpet layers are on the ground, and seamstress are on their knees an awful lot. So it's been tested by all of the industries, 
And we don't have people that are unable to go back to work. They can go back to their previous jobs. I have many roofers also. We have to warn them to get used to this new joint that might be a little slippery or it's not got the friction and make sure that they got their strength back before they get into some of these jobs. So there might be a little break in period of time to get back into those most vigorous sports or laboring jobs. Find out more about total hip replacements and other procedures with Dr. Pohl by going to KetteringHealth.org. Find Dr. Pohl's contact information right on KetteringPhysicianNetwork.org. There's also an audio version of this podcast on iTunes. And keep watching for more Health Connection podcasts. Thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome. Thank you.